Everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar today. We want to thank you for joining us to our uh, new remote workflow webinar, uh, where we're just going to talk through uh, a couple of things. Uh, our current agenda, uh, we're going to talk about the current state of the different remote workflows that are out there. We're going to dig into uh, the Media Hub, talking a little bit about what is the Media Hub, uh, how people are using it. And we're also going to talk about the methodology we have chosen to, to sync the files, why we believe that is a superior method. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about uh, the new in all of this is uh, we've done an update to the Media Hub software and we're going to dig into what that means uh, for our current users and our uh, potential new users as well. And then we're going to show you that. Um, so uh, I do want to encourage you to uh, please go ahead and chat me questions or or uh, you know, kind of write those down on your own. We will have a Q&A at the end. Uh, this webinar is gonna last you know, 15 to 18 minutes or so, and our testing is about 16 minutes long, so uh, obviously plus the, the Q&A. And then, um, yeah, so let, let's jump right into it. Um, I want to introduce my panel. Uh, this is going to be uh, Brian Reisdorf. He is our VP of product. Uh, he oversees our current workflow and then also you know, the future of, of our products, both the remote and our, our platform series of servers. We also have Nathaniel Cooper, who is our president and uh, you know oversees all the day-to-day -day operations of, of Promax. So, you know, let's let's jump right into it. Brian, you know, what are the options for remote workflows that are out there? Yeah, so we still see uh, we see about five typical options, and everything kind of falls into one of these buckets generally. Um, for the most part, uh, the, the probably the one we see the most is is still shipping hard drives. Uh, people are still shipping hard drives around. Uh, you know, when you've got that five, six, and eight K stuff, uh, there's sometimes no better way to do it. Um, so that is still out there, and it's still a lot more prevalent than you'd probably believe. Um, VPNs are obviously a really common way to do it, especially if uh, you have an established network in an office, being able to VPN in and get some work done. Bandwidth and experience isn't always the best, but you can get things done uh, in those environments. Uh, the others that we see a lot um, in various forms and various implementations is the cloud-based storage. So Google Drive, Dropbox, LucidLink, all of those systems where you're uploading a bunch of data into the cloud and then your users are pulling it down selectively from there. And there's different caveats and, and pros and cons with all of those. Um, I think all of us have our stories about how well or not well they work. Um, and we've, we've heard a lot of them and experienced a lot of them uh, uh, in the last couple of years. Um, the other ones, uh, less common, but we do see it for companies that invested a lot uh, in infrastructure, big uh, high-end workstations. We often see the Teradici uh, model where it's the remote control. So you're logged in from home and you're working on your workstation back in the office like you never left. Um, so that's, that's a pretty, it's not, not as common, but it's out there. And the last one is the direct sync model. This is the one we use. There's other products that use it as well. Um, but this is where uh, there's no cloud aspect right off the bat, but you are just directly transferring to the other users in your work group and it's keeping you updated as you work. So those are, those are the common uh, remote options that we see out there. Excellent, Brian, thank you so much for that. You know, speaking of uh, Promax and how we do it, Nathaniel, you know, what is Media Hub? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I do, I, I, I'm looking, uh, look through it and we got a lot of Media Hub users. So awesome. And thank you. I, I hope you love it. And hopefully you love it even more after, uh, after today. Uh, but uh, for a baseline, Media Hub is our hardware device for our sync workflow. So if you're familiar with it, it's, uh, this is a Media Hub. It's based off of the Intel Nook hardware. Uh, so real small device, uh, a little bit smaller than a, a Mac mini. Uh, but uh, that is a device, a hardware device that sits in our users' homes. And uh, so let's say we got the three of us, right? You got, uh, Jody, you have one, you do have one. You've got one at your house. Brian, you have one at your house. I have one at my house. And we're all working from home in different locations. So what that device is, that has my storage on it. Most of those media hubs have a seven and a half terabyte internal SSD that you, you store all of your files and do your editing direct off of. Uh, and then, you know, you create your projects and sync those projects out to the other uh, users in your group. And that device, that Media Hub is what's handling all of those syncs, making sure your files are up to date, downloading things, making sure that conflicts are resolved, 
uh, and then ultimately being the, the storage space for your actual editing storage. So uh, when you're using a media hub, you are actually editing directly off of the storage that is on that media hub. Uh, and then, and we'll touch on this a little bit uh, as well, uh, but um, uh, you can also attach external storage to those. So we do have some users that need, you know, 20, 30 terabyte RAIDs attached to those. And, and in that scenario, the media hub is uh, really just the, the kind of brains of the operation. It's the server. Uh, so you can use the internal storage or external storage with those. But that's, that's the device that drives our whole sync workflow that, so that a user can work uh, at home, go into the office, all those projects are there, work at the office, Brian's at home, Jody, you're at home, and we're all working off of those same projects. Excellent. Very cool. So, so Brian, let's talk a little bit about, you know, why did Promax go with this, uh, this sync methodology? Sure. Yeah. In, in the space that we exist in, that, that you guys exist in, um, you know, there's probably nothing more true than, than time matters, right? So the number one reason why we go with this methodology is there's just no middleman here. When I upload something and when I put it in my media hub folder, it's immediately starting to sync to Jody and to Nathaniel and to everybody else in our sync group. Um, so, so that that's just a huge, a huge uh, important thing to keep in mind as we go through this. Um, now you can't have bigger servers involved, but the main thing is it's getting to the people doing the work as quickly as possible. Um, a secondary reason and almost as important is, is this process is just very simple. And you'll see here in a few minutes, um, when I create a project space, I put something in it. If that sync is, if that space is syncing to the rest of my group, then that data that I place in there just moves to them. Um, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to think about it. If I'm operating in that space, then they are too. They see the same stuff. Um, the other, the other big aspects, you know, this is more of a form factor comment, but the fact that we have storage that we control in these devices uh, means that we can provide a much more reliable experience for your NLE. So, you know, if you, if you've got stuff online and you're downloading it and you can't play it in real time, that's a problem. Um, and, and we control these SSDs that are in here. We know how they perform. We know what to expect. Um, so we can provide reliable performance there. Um, and there's a few other smaller reasons that, that do factor in. I mean, the way that we do this does allow us to kind of uh, share upload speeds. So if, if uh, uh, Jody has a file and uh, that, uh, excuse me, if I have a file that Jody and Nathaniel both need, or excuse me, I'm, I'm mixing myself up here. If Jody and Nathaniel have a file that I need, I can download parts of that file from both of them at the same time. We all know that upload speed is our weakest link usually. So being able to kind of distribute that amongst the group really helps. Um, and there's there's other reasons as well. Large file handling is, is pretty good in our system. It's very good in our system. It's designed for big video files. Um, and then there's also this the, the multi-location versioning that happens in the background, which, which provides some nice safety for large groups. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brian, for that as well. So we, we've teased that there's something new going on. So let's cut to the chase. Nathaniel, what is new with Media Hub's version 5.8.5? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, Brian, you hit on simplicity as something very important, which is obviously yes. <laughs> uh, so how I see the, the, the updates that we've done is, uh, you know, Media Hub was simple once things were syncing previously. Now it's a lot more simple to get to where things are syncing. Um, so the as far as like new functionality goes, we are now introducing project level sync control. Uh, so what this means, uh, those of you that are currently using Media Hub, uh, you know that we recommend having one or a couple uh, permanent sync spaces that people are moving projects, folders, files in and out of. Well, we're, we're throwing out that methodology. Uh, it was it was fine, but uh, we can do a lot better and, and we've done that. Uh, so now I can create a project and Brian, you're gonna walk us through this. I can create a project, sync it out to Brian. Brian's media automatically accepts that, starts downloading everything. Brian doesn't have to be home for that. I can create another project, sync it just to Jody. I can create a third project, sync it to both of you. And now all three of us have that. And that all happens really easily. And all of those downloads and syncs now are, are happening in the background. So being able to control things at a project level really changes the, the game as far as this workflow is concerned. 
And I should throw in very quickly, for those of you that are using Media Hubs right now with the old methodology, you can absolutely continue to use it with the old methodology. If that's your workflow, you do not have to shift over to this. This just gives you a whole slew of new options. Yeah, you, you don't have to. I, having used both, uh, you will. <laughs> like, as soon as I started using this, I was just like, oh my God, I, I didn't know how badly I needed this. Uh, so we've got uh, project level control, but we've also got a lot of uh, really huge uh, improvements, uh, improved monitoring. Uh, you can view upload, download speed, sync status, who you're connected to. Uh, it just gives you a lot more feedback on what's going on. Uh, adding new users, new devices is infinitely easier. Uh, you know, and uh, we've got great tech support team. Uh, I love our, our support staff, but um, you know, we want you talking to them as little as possible for everybody's sanity. Um, so it's, you know, setting up your own users and syncs now is, is going to be, uh, or users and devices is going to be super simple. Brian will show you how to do that in a couple quick clicks. Uh, and then bringing your own storage. This is huge. Like I said, a lot of people need a lot more storage than is uh, just inside of that little unit. Uh, so connecting external drives and sharing those out. Uh, is uh, significantly uh, easier in, in this new version. All right, well, enough talk, Brian, let's see it. <laughs> All right, give me one split second here. I'll get this screen share going and we'll go through this very quickly. All right. Good deal. So what we're looking at right now is I'm logged into my platform on the new version. And the first thing you'll notice when you get in is this new little welcome page. Uh, this gives you some key information, especially around the sync. Uh, so you can see I can I can name my device what I'm going to be recognized as in my sync group. I've also got my device ID here, and this is uh, this is important as we'll see here in just a second. This last part is also uh, something we'll come back to, but this allows uh, this auto accept is a function that allows us to uh, really speed up the workflow, especially from a post production supervisor perspective. You'll be able to kind of dole out uh, the the sync. Uh, the sinks very quickly with this option turned on. So we're going to proceed through here. I've got pretty standard platform set up at this point, but you'll notice I've got a new navigation page over here on the left called sync. And what we're looking at is on the left hand side, I've got all my available platform spaces. And on my right hand side, these are the devices that I'm connected to. So if you've ever gotten into the back end of, of our sync engine, um, this this will kind of make some sense. But uh, what we're really seeing here is I can go through and take a look at, at this A2 space. I'm sharing that with this device here um, and this other device as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link up Nathaniel's system, which is not connected to mine right now. And we're going to sync a space to him. Um, there's only one point that he needs to interact with this, um, which is to allow my device and his device to handshake. Once our devices are handshaked, because that auto accept is turned on, Anything that I invite him to, his system's gonna automatically accept it because I'm a known known device to him and it will start the sync right then and there. Um, so this is a, a really convenient, easy way to get things moving. So, and if, you've, if you are a Media Hub user and you've ever gone through the process of adding a, a new Media Hub and new syncs to your work group, um, this'll, this'll make your day. Because uh, <laughs> you'll know that wasn't a, wasn't a fun experience in the, in the past. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and link a new device and I've got Nathaniel's device ID here that he uh, sent over to me on Teams. And I'm gonna paste that in there and save this device. So now at this point, we see a placeholder that pops up for Nathaniel's device. It's, uh, it's his device ID right now, but over, over the next like 10 or 15 minutes as the systems communicate, this will actually update with his Media Hub's name. Um, so right now I've got mine up here, his will reflect that here uh, and it may happen during the demo it may be a little too quick um, for reference i just got a message on my media hub and accepted that perfect Thank you. so we'll see that pop up here that, that we're connected and unused in a moment but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and go to this demo test uh space that i've already created i've already got uh some uh device or some data in there that i want to share and i'm just going to go ahead and sync that to nathaniel we're going to see it initialize and it'll take 20 seconds or so and uh, we'll see the statuses update here and that will form on Nathaniel's and we'll start to see a uh, transfer occur. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, you guys are just going to have to believe us on this one, but uh, demo test has already popped up on my system. I haven't touched anything. I haven't 
Uh, again, the only uh, active thing I have to do is accept that initial uh, 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 device. And now that Brian's and my devices are accepted, I didn't touch anything. Demo test was just auto created on my system and now it is downloading that sync. Yep, it's already moving. This one hasn't updated yet. Uh, it does take a minute or two for it to catch up with where the syncs are, but at that point, one in a, in a moment or so, we'll see this guy pop up and it'll tell us what we're looking at. So, and in the meantime, you can switch these over. And, and uh, if I want to see exactly what I'm synced to on these devices, I can see all the different systems that are syncing and where I've got tool tips that tell me how up to date those particular spaces are. So in this case, these are all, these are good. Um, these tool tips will also tell me if I'm sending or receiving to a various systems and what's remaining on those devices. So in this case, it's still cataloging, um, but you can see it is sending some data. We've got some speeds. We've also got up here at the top, you've got a really, uh, it's a static thing, no matter what page you're on, it's gonna tell you what you are sending. It's like, so you can see the activity very easily there. Uh, there's also a carryover to the base platform, project spaces page. Um, you can hover over these and it will give you that same kind of information. So uh, some of these, it's a little hard to see because we're not using that much data on it, but um, those will pop up here. Uh, cool. Yeah, and, and for reference, I'll show what this looks on my side. Looks like on my side. Let me share out my screen. Wrong button. That was that was, that was such a, a, a <laughs> Zoom bug that should be. It, it stopped. Uh, it it never mind. <laughs> Anyways, I'll show you what I've uh, what I've got here on my side. So from my side, uh, what you can see is this demo test. Um, so here's that demo test sync. It's at 8% right now, but if I go back to my platform spaces, uh, this space didn't exist a couple seconds ago. If I open that up just uh, on my workstation here, as you can see, I've got uh, some files and folders that were created at 1.14 PM. I'm central time right now. So uh, as you shared that out, Brian, those files are just automatically downloading to my system. So, so I, I just realized uh, this is worth this is worth mentioning. I just realized why we didn't see a, a syncing update on my system, uh, because it's done already. It did the two gigs. Um, that is not uh, a testament to internet speed. What happened there is that I copied those two gigs of data from a different folder that is apparently already on your system, and the system is smart enough to know that that data already exists. And it just copied it into the new folder because it was the exact same data. It didn't need to transfer it across the internet to get you the stuff you needed. Um, so that's a that's a cool secondary uh, uh, kind of intelligence of the system. Uh, I actually did not expect that because I didn't know you had that data on the system already. But uh, that's why we didn't see a, a syncing update because it just checked it and copied it over instantly, basically. Uh, so that's another that's another uh, aspect there. We we try not to use uh, bandwidth when we don't have to. Um, so that's a that's a nice little bonus. Excellent. Well, thank you, thank you for showing us that, uh, Brian and Nathaniel. Um, you know, obviously that that's awesome, but we're always asking what's next. So Nathaniel, is there anything you can share about you know what what's what's coming up, whether this year or next year? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to be clear, five eight five this these this new functionality. This is all available now. Uh, so uh, this isn't, you know, wait for it. This is here now. Uh, what we're working on now, uh, you know, one thing that Brian and I have been doing a lot lately is a lot of uh, interviews with existing customers and prospects. We've done dozens of those over the last couple of months. We're going to continue doing those. Those are part of our DNA now. And uh, one of the things that's commonly requested in this workflow is a software only version of the Media Hub. Um, so the hardware has massive benefits. Hardware's not going anywhere. There's a lot you can do with hardware. You can't do with just software. It's a better workflow. That said, uh, as we know, a lot of our customers are working with freelancers. A lot of our customers uh, need a little bit more flexibility than only a hardware option. Uh, so we are in development on that right now. Uh, we'll see that released here uh, late this year, early next year, but it is absolutely coming. Uh, from an educational standpoint, uh, if you want to dive deeper into those five uh, types of uh, uh, remote workflows that Brian touched on earlier, uh, we have, we're, we're in a unique position because we've had Promax Platform as a shared storage uh, 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 solution for 
10 plus years. So we've got lots of customers using all of those different methodologies. So we know a lot about those. So uh, we're putting together a, um, uh, a podcast style video with a PDF download. Uh, I think it's titled the state of the remote workflow. Uh, so look out for that uh, in about uh, in about four or five weeks. Uh, you should be seeing that. That's some good ac educational uh, content for you. And then as we step into 2023, uh, you know, we're really hyper focused right now. How do we make this remote workflow as best as possible? Um, as we shift into 2023, release software only sync, um, get feedback from you, make some adjustments to that. Uh, we're going to kind of tune our focus towards uh, how do we view and manage all of this data in these distributed environments? Because uh, the traditional, you know, asset management, hey, index this and put it in a database and search it. Uh, gets pretty complicated. You know, it's complicated enough having your project files, but how do we track all of that in all of these different locations um, and in a way that's really simple? Um, so that's what we're going to be focused on in 2023. So very exciting stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Excellent. Well, so um, thank you so much, uh, Brian and Nathaniel. I uh, did want to open it up. I, I don't see any questions yet, but were there any questions? I popped those in in the chat uh we'll just give it uh you know 30 seconds or so to wait for those to come in uh but uh yeah i guess uh this is always the fun time so we went a little long so thank you everyone for uh kind of hanging in there and uh yeah so we're, we're really at a point where we're excited about kind of where we're going uh with, with our products and uh, uh for those of you that already have them hopefully this just enriches your experience and those that I've talked to, uh, you know, have quotes. Um, I will throw out, uh, Jody, an invitation to anybody. Uh, so, uh, and I do see a, a question popping up, but an invitation to anybody. Uh, I made reference to this, but uh, Brian and I try to have at least uh, one conversation a week with an existing customer uh, or uh, prospect on, on your workflow. It's not a sales conversation. It's 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 literally what is informing our development uh, roadmap. Uh, so uh, if anybody is open to having those conversations with us, please please feel free to email uh, myself uh, or Jody or Brian, any of us after this, uh, or you can send a note to sales at promax.com uh, because uh, those are are critical for us making sure that we're developing the right functions, the right solutions for, uh, for our customers and for, uh, for the market. Excellent. Yeah. So two questions have come in. Uh, you know, is there an upcoming version with white labeling? So I could speak to that a little bit. That is something we've looked at. It's, um, we are in the midst of, uh, I don't know if, if I missed it or you didn't mention it, Nathaniel, we are in the midst of, uh, exploring, uh, some UI updates, some, some, uh, much nicer UI updates. So uh, that will probably, if that uh, makes it on the roadmap, it will probably take the form of being in a new UI rather than this legacy UI. Excellent. Is 585 considered beta and how stable is it, Brian? Uh, it, it's just released. It just went through a beta process. Um, I will say that uh, this is probably the most stable version of platform that we've pushed out. Uh, and I say that because we have a completely revamped dev team with dedicated QA uh, and a lot more capabilities than we've had in a long time. So that was a big process that we've set up over the last uh, the last several months. And I'll also add to that, uh, 585 has been uh, live on beta clients for what, probably six weeks now, Brian? Yeah, yeah, at least. Excellent. Uh, Kat asks, is the update automatic? Uh, if you're on ProCare and, and your ProCare is updated, then it is available from the Media Hub uh, interface. It's just in the system menu under nodes. You can, uh, if you go to the nodes tab down at the bottom, there's a check for update button and uh, you'll be able to update from that. Awesome. It so the like short Nathaniel answer is will no, show us exactly where that is. Yeah. So the short answer is no, it's not automatic. It's something that you will yes. go through this process. It is something you initiate during. Uh, uh, in inside the, the platform interface, though. Yeah. yeah, and we've got a pretty pretty good uh, knowledge base article on it. So if you go to uh, promax.com uh, slash help, uh, you can literally just type in how to update my media hub and you will find uh, a step-by-step -step on that. 
Excellent. Rick asks, are there any new workstation system requirements uh, for this new software update? Uh, no workstation requirements. Um, it's all, it's tested all through Monterey and all that. Um, so we're in good shape uh, for that. But uh, yeah, for as long as you're not using, you know, Windows 7 or Windows XP or anything, you're, uh, you're in good shape. And when are we expecting the new GUI? Uh, elements of the new GUI will start to show up uh, around the same time as the software only sync. Um, so that's that's something that will start to roll out uh, in uh, in parallel with software only sync, which at the moment is uh, scheduled for N Q4 Q1, uh, basically. Yeah, end of this year, early next year. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Well, if that's it for questions, just want to thank everyone for attending this. And we did record this, uh, most of it at least. And uh, we will be uh, sending this out an email. So if you want to share uh, this webinar with anyone, you'll have that option. And uh, once again, just thank you so much for uh, for showing up. And um, Oh, Jody, uh, it looks like uh, one last question. Uh, for those of us using the beta version, is there anything we need to do to update? Um, so the the current version um, that is the the final should overwrite the the beta uh, that's on there. Uh, so you can just run the update as normal at this point, and it should just um, pick it up and, and run it. Uh, if you have any issues with that at all, reach out to our support staff, and and they can walk you through. I know that there are instances where they uh, may have done a manual update or something that precludes you from doing an automatic update. Um, I don't know the situation that we're talking about here, but they can help you through that if that's the case. Yeah, and the go-to is just always promax.com slash help. Uh, you can search our knowledge base and open a ticket. Uh, and we have uh, recently uh, uh, in increased the size of our support team as well uh, to put some real specific effort into making our knowledge base uh, a, a lot better than it's, it's been fine, but we really want it to be a, a, a useful tool for our customers. Absolutely. Excellent. So any questions, comments, please reach out to sales at promax.com. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take care of you. So thank you so much and uh, look forward to talking to you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.